Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back. It's another brand spanking new episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo! Silver tone from yesterday. Broke my heart. It's gone. Yeah, it's it gone. It is? Of course it's gone. Oh. You kidding? You think that was going to be around? I was up last night to like 2 o'clock in the morning looking at pinup girl decals on amazon.com going uh find some bitching decals and buying a, i have a dan lecture i think somewhere i sell it and get the one i want <laughs> and put decals on it try and make it look like that won't be the same though god it's really cool though buddy of mine got it so I'm, i know where it's at oh man but it's thumping thursday Woo! it's the start of football season tonight which I'm excited about. It's always nice to have football back. Don't worry, we're not gonna talk about sports right now or anything. A lot of anti-sports people on there. But yeah, it's Thumping Thursday. Here we are again in the episodes in the 600s. Cool stuff we've never done before. Yeah, you're gonna like it. Check this out. Even though it's a base, you're still gonna <laughs> like it. Like the only time oh in history God. that this is ever. It's from 1977. Yeah, that's original wall base one of the jg custom bases very very early in the first 44 serial numbers original sunburst finish leather pick guard and of course the eight coil humbucking pickups leather pick guard many leather bound guards there were reeks of <laughs> swamp ash oh god i feel like joel reeked of swamp ash the other day too get it yeah I get it <laughs> so these things if you don't know now you know well not yet I'm told yet oh yeah check this out what here's the original ledger at least a picture and a copy of it um, these started at serial number one 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 which just got cut off at the top here uh, and they all went to some fairly famous people if I'm just looking through here um, we got the uh, Mick Taylor yeah, from the Rolling Stones. Uh, John Gustafsson from uh, from Roxy Music, who's actually, that's who the, the JG is. John Gustafsson from Roxy Music, amongst other things. Uh, John Entwistle, he had one. Um, this one is actually catalog. Uh, this is uh, number, uh, what was it? 1143, which is on the ledger uh, right there. Yeah, it was sold to Mike... Sh uh, Schnoblin, Schnobel, and Mike Schnobelin from uh, Manhattan Transfer. He was the original uh, original owner on this one. Ian Gillen. I mean, there's all sorts of guys. All the English session bass guys and bass dork guys had these original 44. Now, after that is when wall basses really started to become a thing. That's when you start seeing Chris Squire with them and Getty Lee with them and Flea and Justin Chancellor from Tool like a big part of the tool sound is the wall bass. Um, but these JG custom ones are really the, the, the first basses ever made um, under the wall name. Up until this point, uh, well, well, let's talk. Uh, the, the, the two guys that started wall basses, Ian Waller, who the namesake came from, and then the guy, um, Pete Stevens, who was kind of the luthier. Ian was a session bass player in town, but he was also uh, an electronics kind of guy and had some ideas about how to push the bass sound forward a little bit. And Pete was the guy who was gonna build them. Um, they were being built under a different company name, Electric something, I forget what they were called. Um, once uh, Gustafsson asked them to do a bass, they decided to just do a, you know, start making them. And the first ones all have this leather pick guard, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Some of them are tooled. This one is untooled. Um, I believe John Ent Whistles was tooled with like uh, like flowers and all sorts of like floral toolings on the um, on the leather, but some of these were um, were plain as well. Some of them were finished in different colors. Some were natural. I saw a blue burst one when I was doing research. This one's just a regular kind of Fender three color sunburst finish over ash, multi piece neck, um, maple and some kind of African cool wood, I, you know. At, premium hardwoods, I think they called it. But mm. what really is really uh, cool about these are these pickups. 
um, and what they do. These are eight coil uh, humbucking pickups. See these little dip switches on the side here? These are all different little tone enhancing switches. On some of the later ones, there's another switch here which is called Pick Attack, which will actually give you the sound as if you're playing with a pick while you're playing with your fingers to give you that extra kind of trebly attack. Um, I'm gonna just play with a pick, but I mean, I did that. This was a little before this. This one is pretty early. Um, so these bases were cool, and then Ian Wall um, died suddenly of a heart attack back in the late 80s, right when they were really starting to kind of take off. So then they kind of just stopped. Um, Pete Stevens kept making them for a while, but they became very, very sought after and very, very uh, collector among the bass nerds, which there's quite a few of the bass nerds out there too. Way more guitar nerds, but there's plenty of bass nerds. Um, these became like very, very hip in bass nerd land, and everybody was using them. Check also, you got a quarter inch input. You also have a, a, a direct XLR out to just take this thing right directly into the console if you want. Damn. Kind of cool. And then uh, master volume, volume for neck, volume for bridge, tone for neck, tone for bridge. Three way switch works just the way you'd expect. Big old paddle headstock. And of course, even has the branded uh, original wall hard shell case. It's cool, man. I've been here for almost 10 years running this place. It's the first wall base I've had in the shop. I think it's the second one I've ever actually played. Uh, Justin Chancellor's is the other one I've played. It's the only wall base I ever played. Um, this is the second one. They don't come up often. First time I've ever seen one of the like original ones with the leather tooled guard. Very, very cool, very collectible. Let's go to the couch. Let's plug it in, get our thump on. All right, we're out front. We have 1977 Wall JG Custom Base. Original three color sunburst finish, ash body, leather pick guard. It's going through the uh, Fender Rumble 200 today. All EQs at noon. Everything in the world is shaking with this humbucking pickup in the neck all by itself. Let's see what we got here. on both of those pickups both of those pickups working together here look Let's see what we got
Which pickup wiper you can open all by itself? It's my chest. It just can't take it anymore. It's so thunderous. From Wall, the original Wall base, the JG Custom from 1977, ash body, three tone sunburst, leather pick guard. They're incredible eight uh, coil humbucking pickups and the original hard shell case. And the first 44 serial numbers uh, ever made, originally owned by the bases from Manhattan Transfer. There you have it. Something Thursday, man. First wall base. Only took 600 episodes. Thanks for tuning in. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at Norman's Rare Guitars. And check this and the rest of these guitars out online at normansrareguitars.com. We'll see you guys back here again tomorrow for an all new episode. It's Flat Top Friday. It's got a lot of pearl on it. It's going to be sick. You're going to like it. See you then. Peace. Bye. Thunderous.